Today, we're bringing you a fascinating yet deeply tragic story about one of the world's largest environmental disasters, the drying up of the Aral Sea. Once considered the fourth largest lake in the world, stretching over 68,000 square kilometers, about the size of the Republic of Ireland, the Aral Sea has now almost vanished. Over the past six decades, it has lost more than 90% of its water. What led to this catastrophic decline? How did the white gold of Central Asia, cotton, play a key role in this environmental disaster? And what impact has it had on the region and its people? Stick with us as we uncover the full story, and trust me, you won't want to miss a single detail. Let's start by understanding how this massive water body was once sustained. Historically, the Aral Sea was fed primarily by two major rivers, the Amu Darya and the Sir Darya, which accounted for nearly 80% of its water supply. The remaining 20% came from rain and other small sources. Despite being located in the middle of a desert, the constant inflow from these rivers helped maintain the Aral Sea as a thriving ecosystem. However, this balance began to shift drastically in the mid-20th century due to human intervention. In the 1940s, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin initiated an ambitious plan known as the Great Transformation of Nature. This large-scale initiative aimed to increase agricultural output by transforming arid and barren lands into productive farmland. The plan included the construction of hundreds of canals and irrigation systems to divert water from the Amu Darya and Sir Darya for agricultural purposes. One of the most significant projects under this plan was the Karakum Canal, which began construction in 1954 and was completed by 1967. Even today, it provides water to 1.25 million hectares of land in Turkmenistan. Similarly, extensive canal networks were developed in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan to support the cultivation of cotton, often referred to as white gold, due to its high economic value. Initially, these projects seemed like a success. Cotton production skyrocketed, and the agricultural sector in Central Asia experienced rapid growth. However, the irrigation systems and canals built during this period were extremely inefficient. Studies estimate that 30% to 70% of the water diverted through these canals was lost due to seepage and evaporation. This inefficiency would later become a major factor in the Aral Sea's decline. The situation worsened following the 1973 Yom Kippur War. After Egypt's defeat, it recognized Israel and began to distance itself from the Soviet bloc. Egypt, which had been a major exporter of cotton to the Soviets, reduced its cotton exports. To compensate for this, the Soviet Union ramped up cotton production in Central Asia. By 1988, Uzbekistan had become the world's largest exporter of cotton, with the crop contributing 17% of its GDP and 10% of Turkmenistan's GDP. While this economic growth was impressive, it came with a hidden cost that would soon become impossible to ignore. Satellite images provide a stark visual representation of the disaster. By 1997, its surface area had shrunk by 60%, and by 2021, over 90% of its water had disappeared. As the water levels dropped, the rate of evaporation increased, further accelerating the sea's decline. What was once a thriving ecosystem had turned into a barren wasteland. The drying of the Aral Sea had devastating consequences for the people and environment of the region. Villages that once thrived along the shores of the sea found themselves hundreds of kilometers away from the water. Fishing, which had been a major source of livelihood for thousands of families, collapsed entirely. As the sea receded, fishing boats and cargo ships were abandoned, left to rust on the dry seabed. If you visit the region today, you'll see these rusting abandoned ships stranded in the middle of the desert, a haunting reminder of what once was. The collapse of the Aral Sea also had a significant impact on the local climate. When the sea was full, it helped moderate the extreme desert temperatures. During the winter, it blocked freezing winds from Siberia, and during the summer, it absorbed heat, keeping temperatures bearable. With the sea gone, the region now experiences harsh winters and scorching summers, making life even more difficult for the local population. As the sea dried up, it left behind a new desert known as the Aral Kum Desert. This desert is not like any other, 
It's highly saline, as the Aral Sea's water was saltier than most other seas. When strong winds blow, they carry salt and toxic dust across Central Asia, contaminating agricultural lands. But the problem doesn't stop there. Over the years, the Aral Sea had accumulated pesticides, fertilizers, and chemicals from runoff. And these pollutants are now carried by the wind, spreading across the region. These toxic dust storms have been linked to rising cases of respiratory diseases, cancers, and other serious health issues among local communities. The salt-laden dust storms also contribute to the accelerated melting of glaciers in Central Asia, further exacerbated by global warming. As glaciers shrink, upstream countries have begun building more water storage and diversion projects, further reducing the flow of water downstream to the Aral Sea. One recent example is Afghanistan's Kosh Tepa Canal project, launched by the Taliban government. The project aims to extract 10 billion cubic meters of water annually from the Amu Darya, raising serious concerns among downstream countries like Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Disputes over water resources have the potential to escalate into regional conflicts. In fact, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan have already expressed concerns over the Kosh Tepa Canal project, highlighting the growing tensions between upstream and downstream nations. Efforts to save the Aral Sea have been made, but with limited success. During the late Soviet era, some steps were taken to address the crisis. In 1987, a protocol was introduced to allocate a portion of the river's flow to the Aral Sea. However, the plan failed to deliver significant results, and the sea continued to shrink. In 2005, Kazakhstan, with the support of the World Bank, constructed the Kokoral Dam in an attempt to save the North Aral Sea. This project led to a surprising 18% increase in water levels by 2006, reviving some fishing activities. However, while this small victory is promising, it is far from enough to reverse the overall damage. What's fascinating is that this isn't the first time the Aral Sea has faced near extinction. Historical records indicate that it nearly dried up in the 15th century as well, though the reasons for that event remain unclear. The sea eventually recovered in the 16th century and reached its former glory. The Aral Sea originally formed millions of years ago due to geological depressions and was initially fed only by the Sir Darya. The Amu Darya joined it later, helping it grow into the fourth largest lake in the world. The story of the Aral Sea is a cautionary tale of how human activity, when left unchecked, can lead to environmental catastrophes. While efforts have shown some promising results, the full recovery of the Oral Sea remains uncertain, and for many, it might already be too late. What do you think of the Aral Sea's tragic decline? Were you aware of this environmental disaster, or is this news to you? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video informative, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, let us know which topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching.